back, we're going to take a even closer look at the biological macromolecules that make up our bodies and that allow our bodies to function properly. So let's dive right in and take a look at what we're going to see today. So our goals today are to be able to describe the four biological macromolecules on a molecular level. Again, we're talking about lipids, proteins, carbohydrates, and nucleic acids. And we're going to look at them on an even more in-depth level than what we would normally. Additionally, we're going to be able to differentiate the biochemical structure and the function of these biological macromolecules. So we already have a good basis of understanding. But I think it's important for us to get an even more in-depth look at how these four macromolecules work. And that's what we're going to do here in just a minute. Again, just to remind you, the four biological macromolecules include carbohydrates, lipids, nucleic acids, and proteins. And these are large molecules, hopefully you remember the term polymer, that are made up of smaller repeating units called monomers. And again, all four of these are necessary for life. So these are essential for an organism to be able to survive. Again, just a review of carbohydrates. The purpose of carbohydrates are mainly to provide energy. They're that instant energy source that is necessary for the body to survive. Additionally, they contain carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen. And typically they're in even ratios like 1 to 2 to 1 or 1 to 1 to 2, something like that. The biological term for these are called saccharides, and they can come in several different forms, including monosaccharides, which are just one ring, which is what you see on the right, one ring of sugar, disaccharides, which include two rings of that sugar bound together, oligosaccharides, which are a few of them, so probably somewhere between the realm of three and six rings, and polysaccharides, which can be many, many of those rings put together. And again, they provide energy and structure. One way to remember this is that most of these saccharides will end in O, so things like sucrose, fructose, glucose, lactose. All right, all of these are carbohydrates. They provide energy for the body. All right, and some of them are monosaccharides, some of them are disaccharides, and some are polysaccharides. We're going to take a look at those here in just a second. So again, just as a reminder, we need carbohydrates. We need glucose specifically for energy. If we don't get that glucose, we cannot survive. And if we don't get glucose directly, we have to make it somehow. So we make it out of the complex carbohydrates. We make it out of the carbohydrates that aren't glucose. So things like fructose and sucrose. We can break down and obtain the glucose from that using what's called a hydrolysis reaction. And with a hydrolysis reaction, we're simply going to add... A molecule of water to this. So you can look with hydrolysis, it's going from right to left in the picture. We're breaking apart sucrose and making glucose and fructose and you notice that when we break it apart we add a hydrogen and an oxygen and another hydrogen. So we're hydrolyzing, we're adding water to this. Now in order to make this sugar, the reverse of that would be dehydration, right? You think like dehydration, like you need water or you're, you're dehydrated so you lose water quickly. Well, that's what it is when we are making it, when we are synthesizing this chemical. And so that is called dehydration. So that water, that OH on the left and the H on the right are removed and we are left with water. But those two rings chemically bond to form a disaccharide known as sucrose. So what's really important here is to understand hydrolysis is how you break it down so that we can use that for nutrition for our body. Dehydration is how it's synthesized in order to be made into sucrose. And again, just some views of some different saccharides. You've got simple saccharides like glucose and sucrose. Glucose is a monosaccharide, meaning it has one ring. Uh, sucrose is a disaccharide, so it has two rings. And then we also have complex carbohydrates, which are polysaccharides that have multiple chains of those rings. Lipids are primarily used for energy storage. Um, they can be used for molecular signaling, and they're also a major component of the cell membrane, which we'll talk more when we get to the cell membrane portion of our unit. They're hydrophobic, meaning that they don't like water. Okay, hydro meaning water and phobic meaning fear of. They are chemically repelled to water because they are nonpolar. If you remember polar and nonpolar, we've talked about that. Polar and nonpolar do not mix. All right, so 
these lipids are nonpolar, they're hydrophobic. And this includes things like fats, cholesterol, steroids, vitamins A, D, and E. They all have a lipid component associated with them. Many people think that, well, lipids are fats and fats are bad for you, but that's not always the case. Saturated fats and trans-saturated fats are really bad for you. But when you think about unsaturated fats, some of those can be good for you. Those are things like olive oil or omega-3 fatty acids that are found in fish oil. So those are actually somewhat beneficial. But again, everything's in moderation. And again, most of these lipids are composed of fatty acids, and these can be long chains of carbon that you see on the right here. They can be literally thousands of carbons long, depending upon the lipid that's present. So these have a very complex chemical structure. And if you look there, the fatty acids, you've got the circles that show how it bonds to the glycerin molecule. And it bonds through dehydration reaction, right? Two hydrogens and an oxygen, those would be lost, and we chemically bind the carbon to the oxygen. All right? When we talk about saturated fatty acids, saturated, fat, saturated fatty acids do not have a double bond, meaning they have a full complement of hydrogens with them. So there are no double bonds that are present. You can look at the top right-hand corner. That's a saturated fatty acid, no double bonds. Unsaturated fatty acids have at least one double bond. All right, so those are just two different types of lipids. Saturated has no double bonds. Unsaturated has at least one. We talk about nucleic acids, and this one's pretty basic. These are the genetic code for the cell. They encode and transmit genetic information to make proteins, and these are composed of what are called nucleotides. So the monomer is a nucleotide, and it's composed of a sugar, a phosphate, and a nitrogen base. Now, we'll talk more about this when we get to our DNA unit, but the sugar, that sugar is the basis of the molecule. So we talk about, like, DNA, right? deoxyribonucleic acid. Well, the sugar that's present is deoxyribose. Remember, if it's a sugar, it ends in O. So deoxyribose is the sugar that's present in DNA. And RNA, the sugar is ribose. So the sugar really determines what type of nucleic acid it is. You know that it includes adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine, A, T, C, and G. Hopefully you remember that from last year. And just to show you the basis of the structure is that chromosome number one so that very first chromosome that we have, remember we have 46 chromosomes, has over 247 million nucleotides. It's an extremely large number for a, such a small molecule. But that's the complexity, that's the uniqueness of the genetic code. It's very complex and provides a lot of information for the cell to be able to produce proteins. Again, DNA stores all the genetic information for all known life. So most, if not all, of life, the genetic information is stored in DNA, and that's found in a double helix. RNA is important because it transfers the information in DNA to generate proteins, and proteins, as we know, make the body function. These include things like TNA, mRNA, and rRNA. These are all used for making proteins. Now, the few exceptions for DNA is that RNA is the code of life for certain viruses. So some viruses are, are RNA-specific, meaning that they don't have a DNA code, but they have an RNA code. Hopefully we'll get a chance to talk a little bit more about viruses later on in the year. And lastly, proteins. Proteins provide such a major role inside the body, including things like molecular transport, signaling, enzymes, replicating DNA, and they serve structural purposes as well, like bones and muscle. These are composed of long chains called amino acids, and they're linked together in what's called a polypeptide chain. That's the chain that you see below. By what are called peptide bonds. And these are bonds that include nitrogen. And they help form this long amino acid sequence. Now, amino acids are really, really long chains. Um, I'm sorry, proteins are really, really long chains of amino acids. And in order to work properly, they have to fold to form the proteins. Otherwise, you have really, really long strands of amino acids in our body, and they don't function properly, and it's just not useful for the body. Now, this can fold in many different ways, including an alpha helix, which you see in the red, beta sheets, which are seen in the green. So it's just different ways for the proteins to fold. And these fold 
because of what are called disulfide bonds. So when the protein folds, it kind of folds on top of itself, kind of like how you'd fold a shirt. And when the shirt attaches, it's just like two amino acids coming in contact with each other. They bond through what are called disulfide bonds. And again, the structure determines the function of the protein. And that's really, really important because what the protein looks like and the amino acid sequence determines what the function of the protein is in the body, whether it functions as an enzyme or whether it functions as a structural purpose. So again, hopefully you understand on a more deeper level what these four biological macromolecules can do. Additionally, you should hopefully be able to differentiate between the structure and function of all of these macromolecules because, again, they're all essential for life. I know it's a lot of information, and we'll take our time with this, but make sure to take your video quiz at the end of this lecture, and we'll come back and talk to you guys about it next time, all right? Have a good day, guys. We'll see you later.